Welcome back, everyone, and uh, CNBC at its finest. Apparently, Trump's Mexico tariffs risk pricing some Americans out of buying a car. Did you know this? That uh, enforcing our border laws means that Americans won't be able to buy cars. Well, I'm going to call BS now, because it just is. But let's take a look. Honda's head of American operations, Henio uh Akinjeli, sorry if I mispronounced that, where is it? President Donald Trump's latest proposal to slap a 5% tariff on auto imports from Mexico will price some Americans out of cars just when auto prices are near record highs. Now let's stop there and let's just do some math. 5%. I recently bought a Jeep Renegade. I don't remember the exact sticker price, but I know it was just a hair more than the sticker for my Patriot before it was. I know the Patriot sticker was right almost at 20000 even. So let's say that my Renegade, which is 4x4, power windows, power locks, power everything, has the CarPlay has it all, whereas my uh, Patriot did not. Let's say the sticker on that's 24000 Well, let's see. If it costs me 24000 it probably costs Jeep, we'll just say half, 12000 to make. If we do that times 1.05, then we have 12000 times 1.05. That means they're going to have to pay $600 to import, this, import it from Mexico, which means my sticker price, if adjusted the exact same, would go from 24000 to $25,200. On a $24,000 car, $1,200 is not going to be really noticeable. But let's go for one of the big ones. Let's go for a brand new Dodge Ram with the Hemi 4x4. Power everything, all the bells and whistles. Let's just say it costs $60,000. And let's just say it costs them $40,000 to make. So we'll say they're making a little less. But that, times 1.05, is $42,000. So... They were getting a markup of 50%. So we're going to say that they're still going to mark up 5% no matter what. So $60,000 times 1.05 is $63,000. Now, folks, if you're buying a $60,000 car, are you going to notice three grand? Probably not. You're probably not going to notice it at all because the dealer is just going to get you an amazing finance deal. But here's what the illustrious people at CNN don't talk about. The people who won't notice won't notice, okay? The liberal elite who use their Amex for everything and pay interest and don't ever care because they make all the money and are the loudest complainers about lowering taxes, they're never going to care. And the Americans they're supposedly worried about don't even buy $24,000 cars. They buy $10,000 junkers off of a used lot. Okay, they're buying their cars that are already here. You see, the used cars at the local Dodge or Chevy or Ford or Honda dealer, they're not coming from Mexico. They're not likely even coming from out of state. You see, these are cars that have been in the U.S. for a little while. And we have enough cars on the road right now that the used car market, with or without the 5% tariff, is not going to be affected at all. If anything, used cars will begin selling more than new. Yes, the CEOs are still going to buy their brand new Lexus, and the head of the local community college, still going to buy his brand new truck. But you and I, the people that the idiots at CNBC are supposedly worried about, we're going to buy whatever we can afford. Yes, I would love to be able to go down to my local Chrysler Jeep Dodge dealer, pick out a Wrangler, make sure that all the doors come off and it's a hard top convertible, trade in my renegade, and drive off with the doors in the back. Unfortunately, even before the tariff, I don't have the money to do that. 
I actually did look at how much it would cost. And my credit's not that good. It's not horrible, but it's not good. And I asked him, and my payment would have been about $800 a month. And I said, okay, well, what if I had really good, I'm talking like in the 85th percentile credit, 650 a month. And that's with really good credit, I still can't afford it. And that's before the tariffs. But here's another thing we should look at. You see, economists and Democrats and talking heads on TV lamented that not only would Trump start World War III, which he hasn't, that the economy would just tank under under him because we can't ever get it back. Yet, within the first few months, and definitely within the first year of Trump's first term, we had people coming back north of the border, opening their businesses back on American soil. Detroit is starting to produce cars again. And that's going to happen again and again and again until Mexico starts realizing, oh, crap, because we wouldn't tell Guatemalans and Hondurans, don't march through our country to demand the U.S. let you in. So because we won't enforce our laws and we demand the U.S. not enforce theirs, we're losing money. And it's probably the only way that they're ever going to learn. You see, we could roll into the UN with the most charismatic and believable and trustworthy person to speak for us, and they'd still hate us. We could roll down to Mexico City and offer to donate billions upon billions of dollars to border towns to help make them beautiful and help put people back to work, and they would still not enforce their laws. But we build a wall and impose a tariff on them as long as they are aiding the illegal aliens, we hit them in the wallet. And that's honestly the best way to handle a situation like this. I've talked before about Hollywood. I've talked before about when people demand a boycott of a business because they happen to be conservative or Christian or both. And I've talked about how when I hear someone say, do not watch Tucker Carlson if you want, uh, if you want our business, I pull my business and watch Tucker. Do not go to Chick-fil-A if you are a, if you voted or whatever, I go to Chick-fil-A. When I hear shop with this person, they pulled their ad from Laura Ingraham or Ingram. I don't shop there. They're, they're very much ordering Americans to vote with their pocketbooks and to vote liberal. And I go the opposite way. <coughs> Pardon me. When I'm told this con- this company is Christian, I support them. When I'm told this company is so wonderful, they donated $18 million to the LGBTQ projects and Planned Parenthood last year, I don't go there. And that is what the beauty is with capitalism. You get to choose where you shop. I have a young niece, uh, and I don't shop at Target because Target says... Oh, you're a six foot three, hairy faced, hairy chested, hairy armed person, but you say you're a woman, so yes, go into the ladies' room. Uh, and just please don't harass the little nine year old girl that just went in there. Or the 45 year old uh, woman who's with her as her mother. Please don't hurt them. I guarantee something more. We've already had things happen, and something more will happen because of it. And I will not support a company that enables that. Period. I used to go to Starbucks all the time. I would go there while I was a student. I would still go there when I wanted out of the house. A cup of Earl Grey and a book. Or whatever. Starbucks announced they were hiring refugees over veterans. I quit going. And you'll notice Starbucks is not expanding like they used to. Target had to cancel expansion plans while Chick-fil-A is going gangbusters. It works, people. It does. If you want to buy a car, buy a car from a company that does not do business in Mexico. Then you that means you will not be paying the tariff because they're not paying the tariff. And these automakers are not going to have any problem at all tacking an extra bit of money onto their price tag for the tariff. They'll probably happily put a little line on their sticker, uh, Trump Tariff. 
you don't want to buy a car, don't buy a car. But this is, again, the difference between conservatives and liberals. If a conservative doesn't want to pay a tariff on a car, they don't buy a car where the tariff is imposed. If a liberal doesn't want to pay a tariff on a car, tariffs are so evil and the president must obey them. Conservative doesn't like guns, they don't buy a gun. Liberal doesn't like guns, you must give yours up. Are you seeing the difference? With conservatives, it's just your choice. Donald Trump very plainly told the, the president of Mexico, our country is being invaded and you are enabling it. Stop enabling it. Otherwise, we're going to put a tariff on your country because we're going to not willingly enable a country to enable invaders into ours. Tariffs work, people. You just watch. We're going to see Mexico start helping us out. And then the tariffs will be lifted, and liberals will claim they made Trump lift them, and Mexico will claim that they didn't do anything, but we will all see that Mexico is enforcing their laws. And I honestly don't think it's going to take so long that you won't be able to buy a car. But that's just me using my brain, and I don't happen to work for CNBC. But I've talked long enough. Let me know what you think. Remember to keep it civil. We do not learn from argument, only from debate. As always, please remember to like and share the video, as well as to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you're among the first to know of all new content as it is posted. Until next time, everyone, have a wonderful day.